Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Happy Valentine's Week, puppy parents. Yes, week. True love is worth celebrating for more than one day a year. I have a question. What is a shepherd's favorite snack? What? A candy bar. (laughs) Oh, anyway. (laughs) (laughs) We hope you all are feeling the love this whole week. If not, we can always count on our pups to be our valentines, right? You can, but I think Carson, our JRT, may love you a little bit more than he loves me. Well, I'm going to go with he loves us differently, but equally. Uh. Maybe? No? Okay. Now, when it comes to Valentine's Day, Gabe and I are not traditionalist. We often celebrate on a different day or here and there for a whole week, as we said. It's different every time, and we literally have no traditions for this holiday. Well, in pretty much every holiday, we're not good at tradition. (laughs) And this year, we're actually seeing a play in the month of February, so close enough. And I can't wait. It's been too long since we've seen live theater. Carson is now our live theater. Mm -hmm. Live drama all over our bed, in front of the TV, when we're eating a meal or having a snack of any kind. Ah, and speaking of snacks, like us, y'all probably have treats of all kinds filling your house pretty much since last fall, right? And Valentine's Day is another holiday that especially brings in chocolate. Speaking of chocolate... Yes, yeah, so let's talk about what to do if your dog eats chocolate. In case you are new to puppy parenthood, chocolate is very dangerous for dogs. This is due to a chemical called theobromine, which dogs are unable to metabolize or digest properly. The amount of theobromine a dog can eat without toxic or even visible side effects varies according to their size. Carson's a bitty, so the <laughs> amount of, <laughs> so the amount of chocolate he might steal and eat, I guess I said steal, could be much more problematic for him compared to say a St. Bernard. You get the idea. One study of theobromine effects in male dogs showed that repeated exposure to small doses of chocolate still caused cardiomyopathy, a condition in which the heart muscle is unable to function. So basically, chocolate is the way to both my and Carson's heart, just not in good ways. (laughs) That's that's true. And we often have chocolate in the house, but we are super careful. We keep all chocolate inside of a fireproof metal lockbox inside of a padlocked medicine cabinet. No, we don't. (laughs) You could have just gone with it. (laughs) But we are careful. So if you've listened to us for any length of time or you yourself have a super curious and sneaky pup like a Jack Russell, you know that he can be really passionate about sharing snacks, right? Yeah. So with Carson, we basically have to take a nib of chocolate and immediately put the rest of the bar back on a high, unreachable place. Sometimes we even have to have a treat in hand to distract our boy from the yummy smell of cocoa beans. He smells it all the time. If your pup accidentally eats chocolate, the best course of action is to, of course, immediately go to your local emergency vet or call the ASPCA's Pet Poison Helpline at 888-426-4435. Either of those options should provide you with solid medical attention or advice. But what if you suspect your dog might have swiped some chocolate behind your back? Oh, well, that's a scary thought, especially since it can take 6 to 12 hours for the symptoms of chocolate poisoning to appear. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. So if your dog is suddenly vomiting and having diarrhea while also panting and being restless with a high heart rate, that could be a sign of chocolate thievery and consumption. So gastrointestinal distress with hyperactivity. Got it. God forbid this ever happened to one of your precious pups. But if it does, seconds can count. So act immediately. (sighs) Well, that was quite the romantic Zoom episode, I must say. (laughs) (laughs) Uh 
Well, although not very romantic, but vital information to protect one of your most important Valentines. Hey, Becca, you are positively fetching and I totally woof you. <laughs> hey, Gabe, I rough you so much, I'm barking it from the woof tops. <laughs> Eleven-year-old Walter just may die of boredom during the most boring summer ever. While exploring an abandoned garden, Walter discovers a mystical elf world where all dead plants spring to life at his touch. The downtrodden elves think Walter is there to save them with his new life-giving powers. To defeat the wicked Ichabod von Schnathoff, before he sucks everyone's joy dry with his never-ending list of rules, Walter will need to use his best power yet, his imagination. In a dying, oppressed world, one boy has the power to bring freedom and life. Walter Plume and the Dehydrated Imagination will take you and your middle-grade reader on a thrilling journey while igniting the depths of your imagination. Boys the Book says, beautiful imagery leads to spectacular world building in this fantasy that will leave the young reader glued to the pages. Relatable characters add to the magic of the story with never a dull moment. Get your magical fingers on a copy of Walter Plume and the Dehydrated Imagination by Rebecca Lynn Morales, now at Amazon.com. Find out more at WalterPlume.com. Let Walter and his story awaken your beautiful and creative imagination. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. No. We'd love to connect with you online at jackrussellparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrussellparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.